Hello Stampers, I'm Kelly Atchison at stampabove.com coming to you from a beautiful and sunny Menasha, Wisconsin today. So I have a blog hop and it's with the Color Fusers design team. Today we were challenged to make cards with soft sea foam, seaside spray, and purple posy. I almost, I couldn't read that. Like, you know, I got the glasses on, I need to move it away from my face a little bit. <laughs> So we've got three pretty pastels here, and I chose to use the Wish For It All new bundle. Now this is a brand new bundle in the catalog on page 65, and look at those images. I love doilies. I just feel like there's so many things you can do with them. And to follow the same pattern, we have a little ice cream cone. We have a candle. We've got this great label, a couple flower dies, and those go with the little flowers that are right here on the bottom. Yeah, I love it that Stampin' Up! gives us two dies so we can stamp a bunch of flowers and cut out two at a time. And then we also have the crown. Oh, and this little, like, cup. I think you could put a circle punch on it and have it be an ice cream cup, maybe? I don't know. But the crown, the crown and the doilies are what caught my eye because we need crowns sometimes, right? If you watch me on Sunday night at 7 p.m. Central Time on my Facebook page, A Stamp Above Dash Your Creative Coach, you will find me always wearing a crown. <laughs> Let's get started and I'll show you what I did with this bundle. I wanted to just give you a closer look at this stamp set. I know sometimes I flit around and I don't hold it still long enough for you to really see what's going on. We've got some great sentiments in here. Smile, beautiful. It's your special day. Wish for it all. Hoping your day gives you the best kind of memories. And then these little dots. I love little filler dots like that. They just go along so well with cards and filling in little areas. And then here are those dies. Holy cow. Love, love, love all of these. Okay, let's get started going to bring in my cardstock layers here. So I've got Whisper White and Basic Black. This is three and three quarters by five and this is just an eighth of an inch bigger at three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. I've got an inside layer that's four by five and a quarter and all of these measurements can be found on my blog post that goes with this card. Also some still photos so you can get a little closer look at it. If you're watching this video on your phone or maybe an iPad. It's it's a little bit smaller picture. You can always click over to my blog and see full-size pictures. Then I've got a Whisper White envelope and Purple Posy for my card base that is five and a half by eight and a half. Okay, we're gonna stamp up the inside first. And I've taken these two sentiments, Smile Beautiful and It's Your Special Day, and I've mounted them on one block and that just makes it easier. I futzed around with them until I got them straight on here and now I only have to stamp two stamps one time. Then I decided another really cool element on the inside of my card would be using this purple posy and to stamp this absolutely adorable crown right there. Isn't that cute? Okay let's get that right inside of our card here. I'm just going to fold this in half and burnish that edge. Now, I'm not sure exactly when this Purple Posy ink is going to be available, but um, Stampin' Up! was having some quality issues with it being foamy when we um, stamped it. Mine doesn't seem to have any issues, but um, so they're working to get it fixed. They're always very, very good about making sure that our products are top quality. And so if you try to order this right now, it's probably not available. Just want to let you know that. Okay, there's the inside of our card. Now the other thing I like to do is I love to decorate up my envelopes. So I recycle my paper when I print something out and I don't need it or I've used it. And I just take it and fold it the same width and tuck my envelope in there. I'm going to bring in this beautiful doily stamp and I'm just going to randomly stamp this around on the flap 
of my envelope. Oops, isn't that pretty? It, it's just gonna match our card so nicely. Okay, now we're gonna work on the front. We've got a little bit of embossing to do. I'm gonna bring in some Versamark ink. This is an embossing buddy. It will make sure that your embossing powder only sticks where you stamp. So I always like to use that when I'm embossing. And then the Versamark ink pad, and we're gonna put the wish for it all right in the middle of this black layer. Close that up. You don't wanna get any embossing powder in here. It's really hard to get out. Then I'm gonna come in with my white embossing powder and I like to buy a couple of these and then pour them into a dish it's just so much easier for the embossing powders that I use more frequently I don't do that with all of mine but the white and the clear I tend to use more than any other color then you can give it a couple little flicks like that we've got all the little bits and pieces off and then I'm gonna get out my old but reliable heat tool so there should be a guard on the end of here, and this is the old style. Stampin' Up! has a newer heat tool. It's actually got a low and a high setting on it. Do you see this changing? Once it gets glossy, you just move your heat tool down the line until it's no longer powdery looking. And I like to take it and tilt it in the light and make sure that it's all glossy because that means that it's completely heat set. So my heat tool is packed up for classes this week. So I've got my old one over here, but the new one is really nice. Now I'm gonna take this framelit and we're gonna run that through the big shot. I'll be right back. Okay, and here we have our die cut. I'm just gonna push that out. Now one of my golden rules is I don't like to leave the bits and pieces stuck in my die because next time I use it, I want it to be ready to go. I don't wanna to have to putz with it. So we've got this brand new accessory for our take your pick tool and it's the take your pick die brush and it goes right in, where's my other take your pick tool? Right in the putty end. So you take the putty end out and you put the die brush end in. I have two of these that sit on my desk at all times. I've got the putty, I've got the pokey tool, I've got the spatula and the die brush. There are some other accessories for this. You can also get some putty refills, and I think that your Take Your Pick tool comes with one refill. And then this stylus, you've got a little end and a big end, and these just pop in and out of here. You just pop them in, twist them, ready to go. But I find that I use these four ends the most, so that's what I've got in my Big Shot, and then I just keep these in a little basket on the corner of my desk in case I need them. All right, so we've got all the little pieces out here. Let me get this little mess cleaned up. And this is actually a layer on our card, so we don't wanna go far with that. Now I'm going to bring in the smaller of the two Whisper White pieces. I've got my rectangle stitched framelits here, and this one is actually number four. So if you've watched me before, you know that I have numbered all of these. And from smallest to largest on this side is one, two, three, this is number four. And then I've got A through D over here. And this one is just a all by itself. It's just hanging out there. I didn't give it a name. I feel a little bad for it. No, I'm totally kidding. I'm not that weird. I'm a little weird, but not that weird. <laughs> I'm gonna run this through my big shot. I'm just gonna center this frame right in the middle of our smaller white layer. I'll be right back. Oh, no, you know what? I'm gonna bring that big shot in here because I have some, some really good tips for this. So here comes my big shot. And if you run this through, at least on my machine, now all die cutting machines are just a teeny, teeny bit different. But on my machine, I find if I were to run this through this way with that all that metal going under that wheel at once, it doesn't cut the top and the bottom as crisp as I would like it. So I like to take mine and I like to put it at an angle and I use all of the bigger, the smaller of these rectangle framelits, it doesn't seem to matter, but the bigger ones, it does matter. 
So I like to run it through at an angle like this. Then your wheel is only hitting a little bit of metal at a time instead of that whole piece. I hope that makes sense. I know it's kind of hard to explain, but try it both ways and look at the back of it and you'll understand what I'm saying. And here it comes. I can see clearly that it has die cut the entire thing perfectly. Let me get this out of here. Now the one thing I love about these stitched rectangle shapes is that you not only get the stitching on the piece that you're cutting out, which is this middle piece I'm going to use, but you also get the stitching left on this outside frame or your negative. Um, that would be the part you're going to throw away if you were only going to use this, but we're actually going to use both of them. So we're getting double, double service on this die for this card. And there we go. Isn't that pretty? I hope you can see that stitching. And again, please head over to my blog and take a look at this. Um, I'll have a picture of it on there for you. All right, once we have that done, we're going to bring in our piercing mat and we're going to stamp this up first. I have to decide. I think I want my cake to be the purple posy. So I'm going to ink up my cute little cake here. I love the candles on this because they look like sparklers. That's what makes me love it the most. And then, of course, you've got the doilies in there. Isn't that pretty? You know what? That's kind of crooked. I don't like it. We're going to do it again, and we can do that, right? we got a second shot at this. And that one, um, I think I like this one better. <laughs> This one is a little bit too far from the right side. I didn't get it centered all the way. So we're gonna use this one, and I guess it's not really crooked. There's just a bigger gap here than here, but it'll be fine. All right, now we're gonna bring in this frame. And what we're gonna do with that is we're gonna use all of these colors. So let me grab, we already stamped this in the purple on the envelope, so I'm gonna start with that color. And I'm just going to come in here and we're gonna stamp a couple of these purple ones, just like that. Then we've gotta bring in our chamois. Now this is what I use to clean my stamps, and it's like the best stamp cleaner ever. I love it. We're gonna come in now with the Seaside Spray, and we'll add one of those. Now you wanna make sure that you're doing this very random-like because you don't want just the center to be on the frame. You want it to be very random. Then I'm coming in with the soft sea foam. I'm gonna stamp this right here. Oh my gosh, this is so pretty, isn't it? And just fill that right in. Absolutely love this. Okay, let me move these out of the way. Next, I thought about using dimensionals behind here. And the one problem I had with it is it didn't raise my black or my frame layer up high enough. So I decided to use our adhesive strips. These are really cool and they're just a little bit taller than our dimensionals. So I'm gonna see what size I need here. I need to go about right here. And I just like to cut so that I can peel the strips off in the length that I need. So I'm just backing this stop sticking. There we go. And I'm just going to put these in the middle of each side of the frame here. Don't worry about them being straight. That's not important with this. Peel the back off of that. Get that right in here. I'm going to get these other two on so you don't have to sit here and watch me. I know it's not very exciting. And I'll be right back. Okay, once we have those secured, we're just going to peel these backing papers off. And you can put your um, pokey tool in there if you need to, to help you get the backing off. I didn't have too much trouble. Now, I like to move my cardstock this way. I'm going to watch the border here and on the right and the left side to try very, very hard to get this frame centered. Oops, whoops, whoops. Hang on kind of jumping at me. 
Now, if you find this to be difficult, leave your black layer an eighth of an inch bigger and it'll be a little easier. But I really like that tiny little thin layer out there. Now, what about this mess? What the heck is she doing? Well, <laughs> let me show you. We're going to take this panel and we're going to put it right back in here, just like a puzzle. It's just going to fit right down in here and look at how that looks like a really neat frame pretty cool huh now the reason why i use these self-adhesive strips versus dimensionals is because they lift this up just a little bit higher so you can actually it allows you to see that black border under there better okay what's next we're going to take some of these these are our self-adhesive backed sequins, and they come in a pack with a bunch of different colors. There's white, there's iridescent, they're all kind of iridescent-y. And this is where my spatula end of my pokey tool, or my take your pick tool comes in. And I'm just going to set those in the middle of our little sparkler candles to add a little bling. I thought this was super, super cute. Right? Isn't that neat? Okay, now we've got this. I'm going to use just a couple little bits of the pieces of adhesive strip. I need this to be as tall, so I can't use dimensionals on here either. They're not tall enough. You want to put these far enough away from the outside edge that you're not going to interfere with your frame when you put this on here. So here goes. This little one right here, isn't that nice? I love that look. And then we're going to bring in, where did our card, oh, here's our card base. We're gonna bring in our card base. I have another color combination to show you when I'm done here. We're gonna add this right to the front of this card. And I hear my kids just came in the door. We're headed to a family party today. A zero party. <laughs> um, my husband's mom turned 80, his sister turned 60, and his brother turned 50. So we're going to a zero party or a decade party. Should be fun. Okay, here's my card. What do you guys think? Isn't that adorable? Where'd that envelope go? Right here. Let me get this in here. Who isn't going to love this? Now let me show you the other. This is another color combination that I did. And this uses Pool Party, Seaside Spray, So Saffron, and Petal Pink. So that's another pretty combination. And then this is the first card I made, and you can definitely see the difference here. This was made with dimensionals, and you can see how that um, frame isn't lifted up as much, and it's a little bit harder to see that black. I really wanted that black to kind of show in there. Okay, you guys, if you would like to get your hands on any of these new products or anything that I've shown in my video today, hop right on over here. There's a link there that you can click to go to my blog. In the right-hand column is an online ordering button. Click on that, it'll take you right to my store. You wanna use the current host code, which is also in that right-hand column. When you place your order, that really helps me out. Now, if your order is over $150, don't use the code. You'll get some rewards from Stampin' Up! and I want you to have those. If you have an order over $100, you should be ordering our discount shopper kit. That will give you 20% off future orders. It's fantastic. And you get to choose $125 in any product you want for $99, no shipping, but you do have to pay tax. Uncle Sam gets their part, right? Okay, click down here to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You don't wanna miss anything I have coming out. And don't forget to head back to my blog so you can check out the Color Fusers blog hop and see what everybody else made with this same color combination. I think that there are gonna be some beautiful projects there. If you need a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to earn your business. You can pop me an email Right here is my email address, and I would be happy to mail you our current catalog. Thank you so much for taking a little bit of time out of your day to spend with me. Bye-bye.